Lord willing, this morning we're going to finish up the 23rd Psalm. Um, if you can't hear me, just raise your hand and we, I got a backup plan for someone else to come and preach, but I just feel like we need to finish Psalm 23. I'm going to be out of town next week, and so if you'll turn your Bibles <clears throat> to the 23rd Psalm, I'm just grateful to God for his shepherding of this flock during our study. <clears throat> I've seen many come in to know deeper the shepherd of the psalm, and I'm hearing the beauty of sheep saying, I shall not want. There's a contentedness in our day and age that's coming out of this body that will show forth the beauty and the excellencies of our shepherd. Can you guys handle this? Okay, I feel terrible for you. It's obnoxious to me. I've had so much <coughs> thrown at me <clears throat> this week not to preach this sermon. And um, there are flies, and the Good Shepherd has anointed me with oil, and I feel full this morning to finish this up. So let's corporately go before the throne of grace and ask the Lord to meet us this morning as we close out our psalm, and that every heart would get this, and that it would go from theology to doxology, where we would worship God from the knowledge that we've gained to understanding and from being understood to a worked out reality from he to you are my shepherd. And so I pray that every heart in this room can say the Lord is my shepherd. That's what I prayed for when we began this and I, I pray it that every heart gets that the Lord is my shepherd and the fullness of what that means to us as his sheep. So let's Pray and we'll ask God's blessing on our time. Father, I come <clears throat> before you and I just pray that you would loosen up this throat. God, I pray that in weakness you would use it for your glory, that you would cause the saints not to be distracted, but that they would be able to look at this last verse and we would end in deep worship of our God. So Lord, I look to you to do what I can't do in my own strength. And so God, what a good place that is to be. Do mighty things in your midst, the good shepherd. We pray in his name. Amen. Well, this psalm has been about the, the richness of being one of God's sheep in his pasture with him as the shepherd. And you, you just can't use hyperbole when you try to communicate the fullness and the beauty of this reality of being a shepherd and, and a sheep in his fold. We've examined the the good and attentive care of the shepherd and the welfare of the sheep and it's based on the diligent effort and labor of the shepherd. And it's such a blessing for sheep to be under a good shepherd. And as we watch one like David, who was a good shepherd, he, he got that. And in this psalm, he's marveling that we're under the best shepherd. Truly, there's only one who is good, Jesus said, and that is the Lord who is my shepherd. And so I think of all the great blessings that we have seen in this psalm, and I think they could be summed up now this morning in verse 6. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all of my days. I love this word for follow. In the Hebrew, it means to, it's not like lagging behind and following someone around like a little brother following a, a big brother in junior high. It, it, it literally meant to persecute it meant to follow hard after a prey. And so the love and kindness and goodness of God will pursue hard after you all the days of your life. So many of us have a wrong view of God. He's, he's this angry deity, just kind of waiting for you to step out of line and he's gonna whack you. He's not happy and he's upset all the time. But David gives us a picture of a shepherd who will follow hard after us all of our days, <clears throat> none of you are exempt to show forth the goodness and the loving kindness to us as his sheep. He's after us to pour out these blessings on our head. Do you have a right view of God? Is this how you view him? Or do you kind of spend all of your days wincing and waiting for that foot to drop? All of your days, are you just disappointed in his providences? that are designed to be good and loving to you? I want you to do some deep examination on this question as we close out 
and get alone with God and say, do I view him in a way that loving kindness and goodness follow hard after me all the days of my life? Do I view God that way? I, I pray that what we've learned in this psalm, every heart could say that. So this is, uh, I think it's David kind of boasting here at the end. This is sheep saying, my master's better than yours. My shepherd cares for me like no other. How many Christians feel that way about Christ, the good shepherd? Our worship service is ascribing this to him. This is a Christian looking at his life and seeing how his shepherd has cared for every part of it. He sees the way that the Lord has led me. And at times it might seem like wrong paths. There, there were some dark paths. There's the shadow of the valley. There's some rugged terrain, <clears throat> some confusing paths, some waiting paths. But looking at the whole cycle of a year in Psalm 23, the Lord has been my shepherd and he has led me perfectly. I'm back home safe in the house of the Lord. He has been with us in all the places. He has been with us in the calm green pastures. He's been with us in still waters. He's been with us in the valley. He's been with us in the table mesas of summer and now coming home for winter. There's truly a season for everything under the sun. And my good shepherd will lead me through every one of them. <clears throat> every one of them will be for my good. Amen? So let's consider this beautiful phrase, the goodness. The goodness of God, his his affection, his kindness towards us, his day-to-day -day care of the sheep. And the word loving kindness, you remember when I preached through uh, Ruth, it's the word hesed, hesed. Hesed, it means a covenantal love, <clears throat> a faithfulness to his own. It's that you're in this covenant of redemption with God and he will be faithful and kind to you all of your days. Nothing can break the new covenant. You are in it, you're secure, you will always be there, and because of that, his loving kindness will pursue after you all of your days. <clears throat> what comes to my mind is something very important to a successful shepherd then, is he needed sheepdogs. That, that he had to have sheep dogs that would go ahead and, and they would run alongside the sheep and follow the shepherd's commands to protect the sheep, to keep them on the right path and moving in the right direction. And they're, they're barking and they're running after the sheep, following hard after them. And so I see two sheep dogs in this passage and their names are goodness and loving kindness, pursuing us and keeping us on on the path all of our days. Do you see that? There, there's these sheepdogs just that won't let you get off the path and they're pursuing after you every day. Goodness and loving kindness. We can't get away from it. It, it follows hard after us all of our days. I've got a stupid illustration, but I'm gonna use it anyways. So when I was an unbeliever in high school, one day there was this gal who came up to me after class and gave me a canister of baked goods I didn't know her, and she asked me to Sadie Hawkins, and I ran from her passion for me, and she left me alone the rest of the year. But I want you to get this. You are not safe from the passion of God. He will pursue you all the days of your life. It will follow hard after you. I want you to get that this morning. Joseph Addison wrote a famous song, and it goes like this. Every period of my life, your goodness, oh God, I will pursue. And I think he got it wrong because it's his goodness that pursues you. His goodness will pursue you all of your days. His goodness is pursuing you right now even if you don't comprehend it. So hear this. This has gotta be bigger than saying God is good all the time. This is being convinced of the character of God that his attribute of goodness and loving kindness, his faithfulness will never stop pursuing you. Good will come out of every circumstance in our life. It will pursue you. Good is defined in Romans 8, 28 as conforming you to the image of Jesus Christ. And God will pursue after you all of your days. 
to conform you into that image. And it will take every season to get you into that image. And he will keep picking with his perfect wisdom what you need to draw you closer and look more like Jesus Christ. This is going to get tested. And you'll need to be able to lie in a hospital bed, a hospice bed, with cancer maybe eating up most of your body in a ventilator, and to be able to say, God is good. And I've got to settle this so deep in my heart because it will be tested. And I want the saints at Southside to have that settled, that God in his goodness will bring me into the valleys of the shadow of death. One of my most memorable funerals, they've all been memorable because there's something beauty, uh, beautiful when a saint dies in Christ. There, there is a beauty to it. And I had a friend I went to seminary with. His name was John Bukta. John Bukta in his early 40s got bone cancer. And his dad, Frank, had two sons, John and another one. And he lost the first one real young to a heart attack. And then John got bone cancer. And while they were helping him one time to hydrate it in a hospital, his wife caught gangrene in her intestines and she died in that hospital. And then John passed. And I flew out to Milwaukee to do the funeral. And his dad, Frank, stood up at that funeral and he raised his hand and he said, God is good. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I worship the living God. And he sat there just worshiping and we were just stunned. He said that it pursued him all the days of his life, the goodness and love and kindness of God he did not want. He was happy and satisfied in God alone. It was beautiful. And I just want you to see that this is probably the supreme portrait of the shepherd continually pursuing after me to show goodness and love and kindness to me. It's just so much, don't you? Sometimes it's feel like saying stop. It's just, it's abundant and it's overflowing and he just keeps pursuing me and all I'm worthy of is, is wrath. And because of Christ in this work, he pursues me every day of my life with goodness and loving kindness. It's just too much. Well, I wanna make some application and we'll look at the last phrase. As I really believe that we should imitate this in our God. That the goodness and loving kindness of God should flow into our lives and into our hearts and should flow out into the lives around us. This is the chief characteristic of a follower of Jesus Christ. We love because he first loved us. What we have received and continually receive from the good shepherd that we've studied <coughs> again and again, <clears throat> we give it out. Guys, are you hearing me? This is who we are. Every funeral of a believer should be a steady flow of people who receive goodness and loving kindness from us. If you died tonight, is that what would happen? We gotta limit how many people wanna talk because all they wanna share about is the goodness and loving kindness that you showed to them on this earth. This is the gospel, the, the goodness, the covenantal faithfulness and loving kindness of God and his goodness being poured into me and I am overwhelmed and now I give it out. And that's, that's my life. I, I take, I receive, and I give it out to everyone. That's what we should be characterized by. Is that you? Then you're not able to say in your heart, the Lord is my shepherd. When this truth breaks into your heart, the response will be the same as the good shepherd. It's what will come out of us. I want you to listen to Keller from that book again, The Observation. He said, sheep that were well killed, cared for would change the land and the whole landscape. Sheep have the best manure of any animal and it would just green things up and they would eat the noxious weeds and all the different things. And so happy, well cared for sheep <clears throat> leave behind something beneficial to the owner and to themselves and to others. And so what I ask you <clears throat> is what do I leave behind when I leave a church, when I leave my job at the end of the week, when I leave my wife and my family to go to work, when I leave my friends, when I have to confront someone in sin, what do I leave 
behind? Is it goodness and loving kindness? Is that what I leave behind? Is that who I am? Or are you just gnarly? Is it the sweet aroma of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd? If we get Psalm 23, we should have the aroma of, of the good shepherd everywhere we go. And I just, I want us to get this and not be burdened, weighted down American Christians who aren't drinking from this well that we should be drinking from. Keller was a shepherd in Africa. <clears throat> he said the greatest mark that was ever left there was David Livingstone. He was a missionary that went over there and no matter where that man went, he said he left the impact of his love. And I just read an article about Livingstone and they interviewed a pastor and he said if you trace every Christian's root in that region, it would all end up back at David Livingstone when he came over there as a missionary and there was no gospel message at all. That man left the aroma of the good shepherd. What did the word say about Jesus? He went about doing men good. That's what he was characterized by. He went about pursuing people with loving kindness and goodness. I need you to do some hard examination. And I want you to ask yourself, is this you? Do you just nod to certain doctrines in your mean? Or is this what's coming out of you? The fruit of beholding the shepherd is this manifested in the lives of those around you. Are you mean and nasty, lemon-sucking, judgmental, and critical? Is that who you are? That's not what the gospel is about. I've fought you on this for years, and I'm just not going to stop. I want all of us to bear this fruit for the king. I pray that we would all know Psalm 23 in our hearts to where it makes us contented, joyful sheep that show forth the goodness and the loving kindness to everybody we can because of how full we are from receiving it from Jesus, the good shepherd. That's the Bible in one phrase. And let's look at the last part before I give out. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalm opens, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And it closes, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's just so beautiful. This is a sheep that is satisfied with his lot in life. The mercy of God, I've received mercy. I'm satisfied with my lot in life being his sheep. You're fully contented with the care that you receive. Not a shred of desire to be in another fold. I love being the Lord's sheep. The bond is so tight and I'm going to dwell in the house forever. I like that word, forever. The house of the Lord was a, a sanctuary that represented the presence of God. I was so glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. But taking it back into the sheep metaphor, we've done the full round of a year of, of a sheep's activity. And, and there was green pastures and water at the home ranch. Then we went through the mountain passes of the shadow of the valley. And we came up to the high tablelands of summer and now the fall of the foothills, and we're back home on the ranch for a long, quiet winter. This is coming home. And so the house, the household, or the flock of the good shepherd, it's I'm in the house of God. I will be his, and he will be mine forever. This relationship that I love so much is eternal. Nothing can separate it. Even if I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, it can't break it. I think it's what Paul hit at the end of Romans 8 when he was so overwhelmed with the gospel that nothing created can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate you from this love. I will dwell in the presence and the love of God forever. This is a man who's a, who is a sheep of God loving his lot in life. He's so happy to have God as his shepherd I believe this is evangelism. It's something that we're losing. It's not just the right words to tell how glad we are to be his. You're just so overwhelmed. You just want to 
Tell how good it is to be a sheep of God. Share it, model it, show it. Our contentment should show the world the advantage of being his. They should look at you and just see you thriving. And just say, I wanna be a sheep in that fold. That it just, they see it. Instead, it just feels like everybody's always weighted down and burdened instead of realizing the realities and the beauties of being his. And so those who belong to that sheepfold down the street, where the, the owner doesn't care about his sheep called the devil, and they're sickly and they're diseased and they're miserable, and they're the furthest thing from content. If I had to describe an unbeliever, it's discontent, empty. I need something to fill this. They're tormented by flies daily. They fear predators. And they're, they're held by the fear of death all of their days. I want to show them the beauty of coming under the complete control of the good shepherd. I want to show them what it looks like. I want to boast of it. I want to tell of his wonders to anyone who will listen. Am I making those outside want the good shepherd? Do they see the beauty of Psalm 23 in us? I pray that God would grant us that fruit, that what comes out of Psalm 23 are people who start seeing contented sheep and want the good shepherd. Last week, I had four different visitors come up to me and say the love and the joy in this church was exuberant. It's beautiful. I want them to see what happens when you belong to this shepherd. I don't want them to, you know, to walk in and say they're the saddest people in the world. I've got a good shepherd, and he makes me not want. And so lastly, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, that word can also be translated, I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. I lean more towards this, because this has been the theme of the whole song, an ever-present, all-powerful, all-caring shepherd. He's there at all times, in all seasons. His presence I shall not lack. I have the presence of the good shepherd in every season. Green pastures and still clean waters, I have him. New paths into fresh fields. Safe summers on the tablelands. Freedom from fear and antidote for flies. Just quietness and contentment to live out your decreed and cared for lives. Every provision for life and godliness has been given to you in Christ Jesus. Quit striving, quit being anxious, and I just want you to be contented sheep because you have the good shepherd. And he, he just is so safe and protecting and guiding us into every right path so we can come home and dwell with him forever. This is only gonna come with some cost. You don't get to where David was in this psalm by being busy on every turn. I promise you, you'll never get. What I'm talking about is so far from you this morning, and it's because you're just so busy. David spent a lot of time in the fields alone, I'm sure, and we have to unclutter our lives and get with the shepherd more and get downtime and meditating on these things and letting them grow and deepen and just bask in the beauties of what we've seen in this psalm. Busyness and stress don't bring about a deepening understanding of Psalm 23. It'll never happen. That's the devil's trick, and it's working very well in America. Get some discipleship and accountability of how do I unclutter my life I had a friend, I've quoted him before, he said, if you're too busy, you're too busy. And we've gotta figure out a way this whole psalm came out of me being too busy and God ministering to me on that trip. And so I'm, I'm crying to you, don't be too busy. Get alone with the shepherd. <clears throat> you know, who gets this the most are the older saints, right? The older saints, life slows down for them and the things that were so important as a young couple are not now. And life experience of what to give their lives truly to and what to be concerned about and what to pursuing, the older saints get it. They know it's the good shepherd. 
And so get under these older saints and go learn from them, younger ones, just getting started and you're already spinning out of control. Go get with them. Learn from them. Don't make these mistakes. Some of the testimonies, the three testimonies that we heard, go buy them coffee and ask questions. How did you get there? How can I get there? How, do, how does someone lose their whole half their family and still worship God? How do I get there? And so this psalm, it's a call to live in God's presence. I walk with him and I seek his will. I live surrounded by his gracious presence. I live in openness with him. And this relationship is gonna continue forever. I shall dwell in the presence of the care of the Lord forever. Amen? It's so beautiful. I need to close out. So a couple thoughts as I close out. A good season in the word of God. It's been encouraging to watch what God's been doing in our midst. And so my first application, uh, Joel was making it this morning, is just to the earthly shepherds, I'd like to exhort my own heart and every elder at Southside is we need to smell like sheep. Just that simple. We need to smell like sheep because that's what a shepherd does. He's not a CEO. He gets in, he loves the flock, he knows them and he cares for them. The shepherd is with his sheep. He cares for the souls. He finds cast ones and he helps them back up. In James 5, he prays for them and, and the Lord heals them of their anxieties. He cares for them. It's not a job. It's not an occupation. You're not a hireling. It's a calling. And you seek to love them like the good shepherd. That's what Brendan just made a commitment to this flock. We can't be an organization, but a body, an organism, and not CEOs, but shepherds. Truly, an earthly shepherd just points again and again to the good shepherd, where we should just be a broken record Do you millennials know what a record is? (laughs) When I was growing up, if if it got stuck, it just kept repeating the same thing again and again. And so a shepherd is, I, I don't ever get tired of pointing you to the good shepherd. I'm a broken record. But he's the one who can heal you and help you and restore your soul. And so we must pursue after the sheep with goodness and loving kindness. If you don't have this, I would ask you to step down. If it's not your heart, you just want to preach and get people told, drop out of the training academy right now, young men. I pray that we as elders, those over Sunday schools and midweeks and parents and those discipling others would learn much from the beauty of this psalm and model it to those who have been entrusted to your care. I think I could write a whole book on parenting. Just look with me in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I want to view myself as a dad who's a shepherd of a flock. I shall not want, I want to model satisfaction in the shepherd alone to my children. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I want to take away their fears and their anxieties by showing them the shepherd. I want to lead them beside quiet waters and feed them with the word of God that they drink and drink living water. He restores my soul when they're down and broken and depressed, that we restore them. He guides me in all the paths of righteousness. I spend all of my days training to try to show them how to walk in a path of righteousness for his name's sake, that the glory of God is why you live. That's good parenting if you can get them to see the glory of God is worth giving everything to in this world. And even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. I want my kids to walk through the shadow of the valley. I'll never forget the Seidlers when that accident happened and how well those parents trained those girls to walk through the shadow of the valley of death was unbelievable. And as a parent, I want to train my kids to be able to walk in that valley. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. I thank God many days that he gave us a rod of discipline. Train them. Tell, your kids need to hear no. Correct them. For love's sake, to point them to the right paths. And 
a staff that shepherds them. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. I teach them how to live in the frustrations of life and come to God for the healing. I want them to know their cup overflows and goodness and loving kindness are gonna pursue after you kids all the days of my life. I will never quit coming after you to point you to love and goodness and, and help you see the good shepherd. And, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You will never quit being my kid no matter where you're at or what you're doing. There is a, a love to the good shepherd. Do you, do you see what, if you could just get this and bring it into your home, dads, moms, this could change the whole aroma of a house versus it smelling like Mount Sinai and it's just a bunch of rules with a mean old dad who's crotchety. This could change everything to come in and be good shepherds of these children that God has entrusted to you. And I, I pray from the Sunday schools all the way up to community groups to the elders. This is what we want to be as shepherds. And Psalm 23 has so much to teach us in becoming these kind of men and women. Secondly, I want you to labor and pray and seek God to not just know about him, but to enter into this deep experience and joy of being led and guided by him. I just know too many people that your Christianity is external and your Christianity is just your doctrinal statement. And what Psalm 23 is, it takes your doctrine and it joins you to a living God being joined to Jesus Christ and knowing him and being shepherded by him. And so I want us to be a flock that you could say as Paul, that I may know him. I know this God experientially. I dwell, I commune, I live with him. I'm led by him. Don't come out of this with just a cold external relationship with God. That's not the new covenant. Come out with a living, vital relationship as a vine and a branch with the good shepherd. Third, I'm going to skip it because my voice is out. This, this whole series was about me on an airplane and God meeting me in a special way and trying to learn how to be a shepherd but not uh, kill myself. You know, just learning how to shepherd. But the, the, we, we got to get this thing right of a balanced elder board, how the body shepherds, and we're going to bring some stuff to you and lead and guide and help you and help us as we just function rightly, and that's for another day. <clears throat> My last thought, Psalm 23, it's not accidentally placed in the Psalms. The, or, the order of the things in the Bible came much later. So the letters of Paul, why did Romans come before 1 Corinthians? That they were not put in the order that they were written in. And the principle just seems to be that first is Paul's letters to the churches, and then letters to individuals. And it looks like the longer letters went before the shorter ones. And so you can't really make a theological argument why Paul's letters were put in a sort, certain order. But in the Psalms, they did have some groupings. You had the songs of ascent as they ascended into Jerusalem. There were songs that they would sing that were grouped. <clears throat> and Psalm 22 through 24 are grouped together. And I don't think it's by accident. Psalm 22 is the cry of anguish, and in it, David says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that is quoted when Jesus is hanging on the cross, bearing the weight of sin. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The answer, you're getting justice so I can give all these sheep mercy. Then Jesus dies a horrible sacrificial death that ends in triumph. And then Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. <coughs> And Psalm 24 is the king of glory entering into Zion. Listen to verse 7. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory, the Lord of hosts? He is the king of glory. And so the order is beautiful. There's a cross of the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. 
And now in Psalm 23, you can know the shepherd. By the work of Jesus Christ, you can know the shepherd. There is now access and relationship and communion. And we have the anticipation of the consummation where I will dwell on the house of the Lord forever in Psalm 24. And so I, I pray the beauty of the fulfillment of Psalm 23 is the good shepherd who came and he laid down his life for his sheep that we could enter into the fold by him to have abundant life. There's no other way into this sheepfold. Uh, others tried to crawl over and they, it doesn't work. There's only one way into the kingdom of God. There's only one way into this sheepfold and it's through Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, dying in our place and living the life that we should have. And in Christ, we have entrance into the sheepfold to now dwell under the good shepherd. He is nearer to us than any shepherd who's ever lived. Abide in me and you in me. We are truly one with the shepherd. He is always with us, dwelling in us by his spirit and interceding from the throne room of heaven above. I can't overemphasize the closeness of our shepherd. And because of that, God with us, I shall not want. I don't need anything else. I need nothing else. And that's the testimonies that I've heard through this journey. God took away some very precious things from those saints. And what was left was the good shepherd and they standed up, stood up here and, and gave glory to God that the shepherd is, is enough. And so I pray, let us be a wild-eyed, beady, feeble-eyed sheep running around just delighting in our shepherd, the nearness of him, the closeness in everything that we go through. I pray that your hearts have been blessed in this season in the word of God. Let me close in prayer and we're gonna have a, 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 a choir, a quartet come and sing and minister to us in Psalm 23. Father, I thank you for the way you met us in this psalm. Lord, I pray for every sheep here. God, I love them so deep. And I want them to find this contentment in the good shepherd alone. God, I want them to quit looking for shepherds in this world that uh, they think will make them happy. God, I pray that everyone in this room would know the only answer is the good shepherd. And because I have him, I shall not want. I have everything if I have the living Christ as my shepherd. God, satisfy every heart here with that reality this morning. If that's not enough, uh, we're unregenerate. We're unbelievers. I pray for any heart in here that is on that outside of the fold and they're dying and they're sick and emaciated, that this morning they would lift their eyes to Psalm 22 and they would see the Lord of glory hanging on a cross saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And they would see him there bearing the wrath of God for sin. And that right now they would lift their eyes and they would believe in the Son of God as the only way to be forgiven of sin and made right with the living God. Sin is serious. It's an offense to a holy, just God and it must be dealt with. Oh God, how you dealt with it in your son. Would it break every heart here this morning to come with nothing in our hands and to enter through Jesus Christ with absolutely nothing and to enter into the best sheepfold there could be to have you as our good shepherd to guide us and to lead us and care for us and nurture us, to take us into every season and to give us your very presence and to give us a promise that I shall dwell on the house of the Lord forever. God, we thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Minister it properly to every heart here this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.